Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kane Gordon Show today's best country mix. And joining me right here is my good friend, Eliza Smith. Hey, Eliza, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So kind of tell us a little bit on how you got your start with your music. Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, like most musicians, I've been playing since I was a kid. I um, I grew up in the church, and so I played on the worship team. My dad was a musician. He's a guitar player. And some of my, like, earliest memories are taking all of my stuffed animals and listening to him play guitar and just like sitting in his guitar case with all of my stuffed animals and closing the lid and just listening to him for hours. Um, so I decided I wanted to do music. And so I went to Berkeley and, um, and then I decided that, well, I graduated during the recession. So it was just really, really hard to find work and live. And so I uh, went back to school and got my master's in education. And when I was there, um, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood decided that they were going to come and give this talk about, you know, their philanthropic work and stuff that they've done in education and also um, just their lives in the music industry. And so when they were there, you know, they were talking and Garth had mentioned that he gets stage fright, which really resonated with me because even though I had been performing for a long time, I had developed a really terrible sense of stage fright where I couldn't get up on stage. I would shake. I'd forget the lyrics anytime I messed up, which is like, oh, I mean, often musicians mess up all the time. But anytime yeah. I mess mm-hmm. up, you know, anytime I mess up, I just like freak out. And so, um, so I wasn't performing at the time. And so he mentioned that he still gets stage fright, which like really resonated with me because I mean, he plays to like eighty thousand or more thousand people in one go, and you know, he's been like entertainer of the year many, many times over. And so that really resonated with me. And so after the talk, there was like a Q and A portion. And so I raised my hand and I introduced myself and I said, you know, like, how do you get over your stage fright? And he, um, he asked me my name and I told him my name and he asked me, um, you know, like, well, what do you play? And I was like, well, I play guitar and I sing and I play country music. And he got this like little smirk on his face and he was like, well, this is what we call being baptized by fire. Get on up here and play us a song. And so he invited me on stage in front of him and Trisha Yearwood and the, you know, 300 or 400 other people that were there that day to, to play a song. And so I got up on stage and I played and, and afterward, um, I, you know, I kind of hung back and waited for everybody to get their autographs or whatnot. And I just went up to him and I was like, you know what, I'm really grateful. Like you've really changed my life. And he gave me my, his guitar and he said, well, you just got to get it after it and go for it. And so, um, gave me a huge hug and, and that's what I've been doing. And so, I'm currently releasing my debut full length album, which is called Baptized by Fire. And it was produced by two people. So it was produced by Caleb Gilbreath, who was the former um, music director and drummer for Brett Eldridge. And then also um, Eddie Bayers, who is the official drummer for the Grand Ole Opry and also has drummed on like many, many, many of Garth Brooks's uh, records. So it's kind of cool to see it like go full circle. Yeah, absolutely. What is one thing that you most enjoy about doing your music? Oh my gosh, one thing that I most enjoy. Uh, all of it. I mean, I love, you know, being in the studio is so cool because you are really like kind of holding yourself up under a microphone and it, it gives you a lot of time for reflection and, and thought and, you know, just listening to how you sound and, and really paying attention to your instrument. You know, that's a, I, I love doing that. But then also when you're in the live setting, just like having a blast and, you know, um, being in the moment of the spontaneity of being in a live setting is super fun. And, um, you know, especially when, you know, the crowd is like with you and, and, you know, you're with your musicians and everything's like really flowing together. Uh, it's a blast. It's a blast. So I think, you know, yeah, at all of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I get what you're saying. If you could duet with any uh, country singer, who would it be and why? Dustin Lynch, because he's super handsome and because I love his low voice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I guess you know he's been doing a lot of stuff in his higher register lately but his early stuff is like way down there way down in that deep baritone he's got such a good voice I would do a duet with him in a second do you have someone or something that inspired you to start doing your music yeah so I actually today I just released a song called Nashville Angel which is about my grandmother Um, so I lost her six years ago this month and um, she was the really the first one who introduced me to country music when I was a kid. She would play these country records, these old country records for me, um, you know, like Lula Bell and Scotty and, and um, you know, Dahlia Porter. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until I was older that I realized the value of what she was 
teaching me, but, you know, and she'd always tell me stories about um, <clears throat> her and my grandfather going down to Nashville, you know, in like the sixties and going to the Ryman and going to the Grand Ole Opry and the Ryman when it was still in the Ryman. And, you know, my grandfather would complain because he had to wear a suit and he was in like the Nashville heat and a wool suit in the nosebleed section of the Ryman. But anyway, um, you know, yeah. So I think she really sewed that into me of, of loving, you know, country music. And then my mother would sing a lot of lullabies to me when I was a kid. She always tells me I'm, I'm one of four daughters and she always tells me that she sang to me the most. Um, but you know, she'd sing me all these lullabies. And then it wasn't until I was in high school that I realized she was singing like Woody Guthrie and Peter, Peter Paul and Mary. And then my dad, when I was a kid, bitty bitty kid, he would take me to I mean, Crosby Stills and Nash and Young and he took me to Santana and so he took me to all the Santana before he started doing all those weird duets with like Rob Thomas but um you know so he was still playing his you know really really good stuff but um you know he would take me to to all these shows and these rock and roll shows and so I think my whole childhood was just infused with that vintage vintage music and vintage country and vintage rock and roll. And so I think that those really kind of came together to, to make me who I am today. Mm -hmm, for sure. Where can people find you on social media? Yeah. So my handle is Eliza Smith music. Um, and it's Eliza with an S not a Z. So you can find me there on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. You can also go to my website, which is www.elizasmithmusic.com. And there's all sorts of good stuff on there too. What advice would you give someone that might want to start singing? Singing or like being an artist? <laughs> uh, singing and a little bit of both, actually. Singing a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, so my advice to you, if you want to be a singer, would be to take care of your voice. Don't smoke. I drink a lot of whiskey, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> but definitely, you know, as best as you can, try not to smoke. Take good care of your voice. Stay hydrated. Make sure you're drinking tons of water. Um you know, that just taking care of your instrument, you know, you oftentimes don't realize that, you know, your instrument is in your body 100% of the time. And so it's really affected by what you put into it and what you do to it. So, you know, take good care of it. Um, and then for someone that wants to be an artist, I think my advice to you would be, it's really hard. That's really, really hard being an indie artist. Um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of heartache, but you just got to keep pushing and, and keep pushing and being kind. I think that you know, one thing I'm learning as an artist is, you know, you, you kind of go through this phase where you're like trying to network. And when you network, you're always thinking about what other people can do for you, as opposed to just being a kind and genuinely nice person and just wanting to connect with people. So I think, um, I think that's one thing that Garth Brooks is actually really good at is just being nice and kind and um, just a generally good person. So I'd say, you know, if you're trying to be an artist, you definitely got to push, but find that balance between, you um, being kind and really genuinely wanting to connect with people. Um, and then also still, you know, pushing your career forward. Yes. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. What are your uh, hobbies or interests outside of music? Hobbies and interests outside of music. I love to cook and I'm really good at it. <laughs> before, <laughs> before I started doing this, I had a cake business that I, I made cakes for people. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I love to cook. I love to bake. Um, I love to read. Um, I have a three-year-old son. And so I love hanging out with him and taking care of him. And, and uh, we always love to go out hiking and, and being out in nature too, fishing, all that kind of stuff too. So I, I like a lot of different things. <laughs> awesome. Where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Oh God, I don't know. I, hate that <laughs> I always hate this question. I've hated this question ever since I was a kid. <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, I mean, that's the crazy thing. You never know in this industry, mm -hmm. you know, so much of it is luck, right? I mean, it, so much of it is luck. You can push and push and push. And if you're just not lucky, you're just not lucky. So, um, you know, I think Jason Aldean has a song, uh, that's like one day they repossess your truck and the next day you make a couple million bucks. Right. So, I mean, who knows, who knows where I'm going to be five to 10 years down the line, but I know that whatever I'm doing, um, I'll, I'll always be playing and, and singing music because I have to in order to breathe. Yeah. Do you have any uh, upcoming tours or anything? Touring? Not so much right now, just because of, you know, COVID is right. still mm -hmm. doing its thing. Um, but, you know, we are certainly starting to play out a little bit more. So I have a, a gig this weekend at Appleton Farm um, on the 7th, which is going to be really fun. I think they're doing like a, an outdoor, beautiful pizza thing. They have this like super cool pizza oven and they do these events. Um, mm -hmm. 
and that's outside at Appleton Farm in Ipswich, which is beautiful. And then on the 12th, we've got another gig, which a, with a full band at um, Loretta's Last Call, right after the Sox game, which is always a blast. So if you want to come down and party a little bit, that's always a good good time. Absolutely, for sure. Is there anything else that I forgot they'd like to share with us today? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, talked about my releases, talked about, you know, upcoming shows. Um, yeah, so I guess the only other thing would be that, um, so I'm releasing my record, Baptized by Fire, in, oh, that's my son playing, I'm sure you can probably hear all the trouncing about me, that's my son playing the piano upstairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I'm releasing my full-length record um, fully together in at the end of October, early November, but I'm releasing one single at a time. So if you stick with me, it kind of tells the story of, you know, redemption of, of mm -hmm. um, you know, vices through love. And so, um, yeah, just hang in and, and, you know, come along with me with the ride. And then um, in this fall, I'll be releasing the whole thing with like an exclusive merch bundle, which should be pretty cool. Awesome. Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to Eliza Smith for joining me right here on the King Gordon for today's Best Country Mix. We appreciate your time to talk to us, Eliza. Thank you, Caden. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem.